Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage. Today I thought I would continue on the brakes. In the previous video I found out that I had to figure out the stuff with the rear trailing arms before I could fit the braking system. So I did that. And now I realize that I have to sort the issue with the torn rubber boots on my drive shafts on the front end before fitting the brakes. Otherwise I would just have to take it apart once again. And there's no really reason to do that. So yeah. It's all about finding the right order to do things, to not do the work twice, really. So today I'm going to take out both drive shaft, change the, the rubbers, clean them out, of course. And then I suspect that gearbox oil will come out of the gearbox. I don't really know this system, but very often when you take the drive shaft out of the gearbox, the oil will drain. It's not on all gearboxes, but on, on many of them. So I bought gearbox oil for this car. Also just because I have no idea when it was changed last time. It could be in the Soviet Union. So I'm going to do that as well. But uh, let's get to work. I already started on the, uh, on the left side, but now we're going to continue on the, the other way around. I started on the right side and uh, now we're going to continue on the left side because there's more lighting and light is a good thing for the video camera. In the corner back there, it's not very good. So we're going to start working on this side now. Well, I don't have any experience working on a Trabant, so uh, everything is new to me, and I love that. Um, I could do a lot of research to know how stuff comes apart, and um, I actually found a manual now that I or bought a manual. But I actually like the challenge of trying to figure out stuff myself, and then if all fails, then resort to the manual and to, to forums and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes that results in mistakes, sometimes that results in stuff being broken, but I just like it. It's a challenge for me and I like that. But this right there is cracked, where you can see all the grease coming out. That is the one we need to change. This is not like a completely normal drive shaft on most cars because this rubber gator is not spinning actually. It's stuck to the housing right here and then the axle in there spins in the rubber. Uh, I don't know if there is a bearing down there. There most likely is. We'll see about that. So what we're going to do is to take it out, of course. And to do that, we'll have to flip the entire assembly a little bit out. Otherwise, it won't come out because, yeah, there's not enough room. To do that, I'm going to loosen up the suspension or the, uh, or the shock, of course. I'm going to loosen that up on the inside of the engine bay. Um, then I'm going to loosen up that nut right there, which, which uh, is a bolt going all the way through this bearing. Not bearing, but a um, uh, 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 ball joint. It's a kind of a ball joint. Uh, down here is a locking pin that we need to take out to be able to take this one out. Um, and then we should be able to flip the assembly a little bit outwards and, and by that take out the drive shaft. And when we take out the drive shaft, we'll see if oil comes out of the gearbox. I don't know yet. Oh, and by the way, some of you commented why I didn't paint. And I also talked about it in the video, why I didn't paint the rear trailing arm when I had it all off. And I can really understand why you think that's a bit weird. But knowing myself, I just know that, that it will slightly just make the entire project grind to a hold if I start trying to make everything look like new because there's so much to do, so much to clean, so much to paint. And uh, even though I really like the thought of making everything shiny, it's not really the way I roll. Uh, I'm going to protect everything on this car with some spray on, uh, body, uh, body protection uh, and rust prohibitor. Uh, but I'm not going to paint all these parts in here. Not now at least. Maybe in the future. I don't know. But seriously, this car when it's done and ready for the road, will not be in daily drive or in daily use. I really doubt that. Um, and it will most likely only be used in, in nice weather. So, But trust me, I do understand why you think it would be a nice idea. Because it is. If I want this car to really last a long time, or if I wanted to sell it for more money, then of course it would need to be painted. But yeah, I'm not going to do that. Another thing is, uh, by the way, by looking at stuff, there's no rubber on the steering nozzle, and I think that's original because it doesn't seem to have had any rubber grooves or anything for the uh, for the boot. I have bought new steering nozzles that are a different kind, but seem to be 
but it seems to be possible to fit them because I'm not sure that this will be okay for the MOT, even though there doesn't seem to be any rubbers from factory. I think it's it needs to be there. I don't know. But anyway, let's start taking stuff apart and we'll start in the engine bay because right down there is a snail or at least the house of the snail and it's not a 2CV but it's an actual house for a snail <laughs> oh. well that is really fitting for Traban. Anyway, down there is a nut that I'm going to spin off. Then I can remove this, and then then I can remove this reservoir for the uh, for the window washer. Yes, this car has one. And then underneath there should be another nut that I can spin off. I will most likely have to um, to keep the strut from spinning, and then the strut is loose. So I'm just going to do that real quick. So I took the washer bottle off and, and tried to loosen up this. This is rather stuck. Then I suddenly realized that I'm not sure that it's even necessary to take that off because I think that I can just take the lower one out and then tip the entire assembly outwards. That could make it difficult to reassemble, but I can always continue trying to loosen that if it's not possible to put back together this way. So that is what I'm going to do now, because there's no reason to make it more complicated than it has to be. This is actually just a threaded bar going all the way through from one side of this. And I think that is called a wishbone or swing arm, maybe. Um, all the way through. And then got a knot in between that locks it in place. So I only have to take off the nut from one side and then I can tap it that way but not before I have removed the lower bolt from here. Like that. Then it should just be a matter of finding a hammer and then tap this all the way through and it could be, there could be a lot of tension on this, so I need to be careful. I don't think there is though, especially, no, there can't be because it's at least locked with the strap or the strap, the limiter strap right there. That is actually broken on the other side, so I need to change that, but let's see. Oh, and it's good practice to put the knot back on and spin it until it's flush with the with the bar, like this. That way, when I when I hit it with the hammer, I hit both the nut and the inner part, and this is to prevent from wrecking the thread on it. Uh, so, and it's already moving. So now I should be able to just take the nut off again, and then tap it the rest of the way. Like that. As you can see, the assembly dropped slightly, but it didn't jam this in between, so there is not a lot of force involved. I should be able to pull this assembly out. Yep, we are. That's good. Next up, because when I took off the drum, I uh, hammered this axle stop backwards, so that is already loose in the bearing. There's a chance that this bearing is damaged and um, it would be really nice to change it now if it was, but I don't know if it is. Oh. So next up is to get something to drain the oil into, if any oil comes out. We're gonna use this one and put it underneath the gearbox right where the shaft coat goes into the gearbox. So I think I should be able to push the stop backwards and pull the assembly outwards. Oops. So there we go, it's off from the housing. And then it should be possible to push it all backwards and this 
is where it starts getting messy because grease from joints or drive shafts just gets on everything. I really, I like this job, but I hate the greasy part of it. But is this enough to take it out? I'm unsure. I might have to take off the the uh, steering knuckle as well. I'm going to have to take this one off. Like that. I wonder. Yeah, I'm going to use my if if I can, if there is room, I'm going to use this ball joint splitter. I like that. Sometimes it destroys the rubber. That's not an issue on this one because there is no rubber. If you know, then please comment if that's normal, that there are no rubbers on these because it really looked that way, but it's, it's slightly weird. It won't, I can't use that one because it's not long enough. This is another way to split a ball joint that also tends to destroy the rubber. And once again, that doesn't matter. Oh, that was really easy. I'm surprised about this card. It's just so easy to get stuff apart and it definitely does not look that way when you look at it, but it is just coming apart nicely. Let's see if that makes more room. Yep, that was enough. That's good. And then let's pull out on the inside and see if oil comes out. You can maybe see some small 10 millimeters, 10 millimeter bolts holding a flange with the rubber on. And I think we can just zip those out and then we can take it out. So I'm gonna try. I'm a bit unsure if I did this the right way, but it seems as though I'm pulling quite a lot of stuff out of the gearbox now. But <laughs> Also, I forgot to use my gloves, so I'm greased up now. There we go. At least something came out with it. Yeah, I ended up getting into some troubles now. Well, not big troubles, but some troubles because let me show you where I'm at. Well, one thing I realized is that um, I did not have to take that thing out with the four bolts. So that makes sense to me now that I actually didn't need to take that out. So I will have to just put that back in and make sure it's leak free. The way the rubber is hold onto the gearbox is by this little rubber thing. That is a small spring rubber that is broken. So I can't reuse that. But it is actually just supposed to grab a hold of the... I'm going to try to film it a bit closer. Maybe you can see a groove in that cup. That is where the rubber is supposed to, uh, to clamp onto. So I don't have to remove that part. That actually means that it's not necessarily... It's not necessary to drain the oil on a turbine to change the drive shaft. That's good to know. But take a look at the oil. I'm really happy that I'm doing it anyway because it's completely black. So where I'm at now is I got the drive shaft on my bench. And uh, as you can see, the bearing came out. There's two bearings in the wheel, one on each side. Um, this one stayed in, in place. This one came out. That is not good. Uh, it seems all right, but because that it came out, I'm suspecting that it's damaged because if you want to press a bearing out without damaging it, you will have to support both the inner and the outer in this instance at least. But, in, but the way I did it, by hammering on this end, it was only pushing against the inner ring and the outer ring was stuck to the housing. Therefore, it could have bent slightly. It's not necessarily the case, but I'm just not going to risk it because this is turning out to be... No, it's, it's not a big job, but I don't want to risk putting it all back together and then have a damaged bearing in there. 
So I'm gonna fit new bearings. I think that's the best way to do. That means I need to take the rest of that thing out. What's it called? Yeah, I just need to take this bolt out and then take the entire assembly out so I can press it in in my, uh, in my press. So that is what I'm going to do. I think that is the best solution. I really think it would be a shame to put it back together and then have a rumbling bearing. So I got, I got the part out now uh, and also fitted that thing in there again, cleaned it up and all, all that. That was not necessary to remove, but uh, now we know. So this video will end here because I will have to order those new bearings and some other small stuff. And then we're going to press out the old bearing in here, press this one off and then fit it all together and back on the car. Um, yes, I could just hope that this bearing was not damaged and fit it all back together, but I have a feeling that this is, uh, is damaged. And also I see quite a lot of grit in the grease that the other bearing is riding in. So I am expecting these bearings to be not made, maybe not broken now, but very close to breaking and being noisy. So um, that could be an MOT fail and that would be silly when I'm this deep into it. So yeah, I'm gonna order those and then uh, this video will end. So yeah, this is one of those instances where it does not exactly go after plan. But working on old cars, a plan is pretty much just a direction. You will never know what you encounter on that direction. So I won't really finish anything up in this video. Now I will have to wait on the parts and I think I will continue on something else until then. Maybe the ignition system or maybe all the seals on the windows. So um, this is all for now. See you in the next one.